What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Commander Restless Corpse, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now, we're looking at episode 82. I am about, I would say, 400 or so light years away from where I was yesterday. And to be honest, um, this straight line course is very boring. I'm just throwing that out there. This, I have not been able to find anything amazing yet. I found maybe one or two water worlds on the way here, and I've scanned a lot of high metal content and metal rich uh, worlds, but nothing spectacular. Like I, the whole reason that I did about 400 or so light year jump was I was looking for something to, you know, something cool to have like a, a start of the video screenshot, and I couldn't find anything. So I decided to do this again. It's been a while since I've just jumped into an asteroid belt. I kind of wish these asteroid belts were a little bit bigger and, and more dense, you know? There's like six asteroids in each belt, which is kind of ridiculous. But, whatever. It's good enough. I mean, it's always cool to have a screenshot really close to a star, right? In any case, I am going to move on. I've got a new, a new route plotted. And uh, I'm just going to, you know, jump down that route. And if I find anything awesome, I'll let you know. So because in the last video I did bring up the whole Call of Duty shift thing, how they're they're going to be making like space combat and stuff like that, because I talked about that, um, I have, I was talking to Flame here uh, about, you know, that, I guess, and he brought up a game called Angels Fall First. Now, when Angels Fall First first came out on Steam Early Access, I did buy it. This was way before I started playing Elite. And I played it for about a week, you know, Thanks off and on. Uh, because I had planned on doing videos for Angels Fall First. Because when I saw, like, the, the Steam page, uh, when I heard about the game, I went to the Steam page and read all about it. And it sounded, like, absolutely amazing. And, uh, again, this was before I started playing Elite, so... Uh, it was before I played Star Citizen as well, so I was like, holy shit, man, it's like, you know, ground battles and space battles and boarding battles and things like that, and it sounded absolutely amazing. So I bought the game, I fired it up, and I went through the tutorial, and I played a few matches, and I actually enjoyed the game. I mean, it's, it's a fun game, but at the time, it just seemed really buggy and kind of lacking, to be honest. But I've noticed that there have been a lot of updates since then. I, you know, I see my Steam updating it all the time. I've checked the uh, the the page every once in a while, like the discussions and the forums and whatnot, to see that they're actually still adding stuff to it. And as Flames or like mentioned to me, the devs are actually really active in the game. They're always adding stuff. They've added new maps and they're trying out like mech combat and stuff like that. Now, while that does kind of scratch the itch that I was talking about with how I believe that uh, Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty should be, I don't think that it would be as polished as Call of Duty if Call of Duty tried to do the same thing. But, because he brought it up and reminded me of it, I'm actually going to go back to the game now that there have been a lot of updates and like bug fixes and polish and stuff like that and check it out. And I'm going to play it for a little bit and see if I actually would enjoy making videos for it. Because that's that's the whole reason that I bought it in the first place. And I was really excited about making videos about it at the time. I don't remember what the hell else I had going on. I think I was playing uh, Bloodborne, the, the DLC for Bloodborne or something. I don't, I don't remember. That was... It, it's really hard to remember what the hell I was doing right before I started playing Elite, to be honest. Um, but I am going to go ahead and check that out. And to be honest... I think that if Call of Duty tried to do what Angels Fall First is doing, I think that it actually could be really big. And I know that a lot of Call of Duty fans aren't happy with with this announcement, but if they if they went the route that Angels Fall First has gone, I think that it could be something pretty damn awesome. But we won't know until we see. Now, uh I did get a few comments from you guys. I know that some uh, one of you agreed with me about the whole Modern Warfare 2 being the best Call of Duty. Um, and uh, I remember somebody saying that if Call of Duty did do, like, in-space ship combat, it would be a lot more arcadey. And that's what kind of what I was touching on when I said that it wouldn't be nearly as deep as Elite Dangerous' combat. 
And of course, again, I know some of you will probably be like, ah, Elite Dangerous Combat is not really that deep. And I've also heard uh, it said that Elite Dangerous is more arcadey than Star Citizen. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I mean, kind of, I guess. Uh, they, they did do a lot of tweaks with, like, the turning speed in ships because they didn't want it to turn into, like, quote-unquote turret battles. But that's, that's space combat, guys. If you, you know, let's say you're looking for something akin to, like, Battlestar Galactica and the Viper combat and stuff like that, which that's really what I was hoping that both of the games would be, the Star Citizen or the Star Citizen's a little bit more that with the whole decoupling and things like that. Because even in this game, when you turn flight assist off and it makes you um, a little bit more uh, maneuverable, you still have the problem of slow turning. You know, you can't just turn flight assist off, zip around, and then, you know, do your thing. You still are kind of... You're still limited to your, like, lateral thrusters and stuff. Um, but... That's the kind of combat that I like. That's the kind of combat, or at least space combat in general, that I was expecting. And I didn't quite get that, and it does make it kind of difficult in some places to uh, to have, like, real good dogfighting. But I like the way that Elite does it. I just... I tend to, in games like this, or, you know, any vehicle-style combat game, take the lighter, more maneuverable vehicles and you know uh and survive on the merit of you know being able to be hard to hit whereas it's a little difficult to do that in elite dangerous unless you're unless you're doing like you know silent running but the problem is that the lasers the laser weaponry in elite dangerous which is what most people use is instant you, f you pull the trigger and your lasers hit wherever your trigger was at the time you don't have to lead your targets or anything like that and while that is cool for like grinding out npcs and stuff I, I think that it makes it a little difficult when it comes to combat in general like if i'm getting my ass kicked and i want to be you know go into maneuverable mode and try to out outfly the other opponent it comes down to the only way to outfly another opponent is to stay out of their crosshairs. Because if they have laser weaponry, if you're in their crosshairs, you're getting hit when they pull the trigger. So that's something that I kind of feel is lacking in general, I guess, for me anyway. It's just more maneuverable combat. Because in Elite Dangerous, if you can keep the guy like relatively in front of you... Uh, it, you know, if they're not... Well, let's take NPCs, for or for example, because they never obviously do silent running. If you can keep an NPC in front of you, then you're going to hit him all day. No problem. Uh, and then when it comes to player combat, all the videos I've seen are just jousting matches. You know, nobody ever actually is able to maneuver around behind someone and stay behind them. And that's, that's dogfighting. Like, I grew up playing aerial combat sims. Uh, and like ace combat and air combat and things like that and you know the whole trick of those I remember I played a 10 tank killer for a really long time on the PC back in the day uh, and you know the whole concept of that is maneuvering yourself behind the enemy to be able to hit them whereas it, you don't really need to do that in elite dangerous I mean it, it helps if you can do that then that's the way to do it because they can't fire back but all the PvP videos I've seen are always just jousting. You know, you'll fly at each other and fire off. Everybody seems to be using rail, com rail guns and, and uh, plasma accelerators. You fire off those, you fly past your dude, and both of you turn around and you go back at it. And that, that's just... I'm sure that there are pilots out there that are better and can, you know, get around behind people and stay there. But the majority of the videos I've seen were just jousting matches. Now, the cool thing about Angels Fall First that I really liked was actually the space combat. Uh, I was actually pretty damn good at it. For the few games that I played, I was able to take down a lot of a lot of other pilots, which I thought was really cool. And I was kind of looking for something more like that in this. It just didn't turn out that way. But I am going to go ahead and revisit AFF and see if I can get some cool videos out, you know, 
of it because uh, at its core, it is actually a really good game. Like I, I'm not really a big fan of the floaty Unreal style like ground combat, although it's not horrible and it's well implemented. I remember the last time I played it, uh, I was in a a pretty big battle and I was doing great. I was getting lots of kills, but I ran out of ammo. And I could not for the life of me figure out how to replenish my ammo. I ran over to enemies that I killed. I couldn't figure out how to take their ammo. Uh, I, nobody, like, I was running around hit, mashing the button that tells your teammates that you need ammo and nobody was dropping ammo or anything like that, even if they were the class that could. So I, I don't know. That was just one of the things that I was like, you know what, I'll try this game a little later. I'm, it doesn't quite have the following that... I would like in a game like that but to its credit it does have these massive matches where if there's not enough people obviously it fills it in with bots but there was another game that did that that I was super hyped for when it was coming out and after I got the game I played it for about a week and playing it for that week was actually pretty generous because it was a terrible game and that game was called Brink I don't know if any of you ever played Brink but it was bad it was really really bad and the problem with that is uh, like it had a cool concept it was the whole parkour shooter uh, and it had I guess some decent like classes and stuff that you could be and it had a lot of potential but the problem with it was it first of all it was very laggy it was a very laggy game and I've always prided myself at having a pretty good connection like I pay a lot of money for my connection to be awesome but it was a lag game in general and it was people had a lot of trouble connecting and obviously when people couldn't connect they would fill those spots with bots now these bots were absolutely terrible and if you were on a team and and you can't really fault it for that because an ai is never going to be as good as a human player but if you're on a team with even one or two more human players than your team, you were hosed. It was terrible. Uh, and Brink just had a lot of problems. It, it just wasn't that fun of a game. So I'm, I'm hoping that games like that, like AFF, can, uh, can overcome that with the whole bot thing. Because obviously, I mean, the game needs to get a little bit more popular. And the devs are, from what I hear, the devs are actively working on, you know, producing content and stuff like that. I'm going to shut up about AFF, but I just wanted you guys to know that it's out there. And then I'm going to be checking it out and possibly making videos on it in the near future. All right, so check this out, guys. Look how close these damn planets are. It's a planet and a moon. So, you know, I can't pass this shit up. So we're going to be landing on this moon, trying to get a cool screenshot with this planet. We'll swing around. Let's see if we can line it up. This moon has some pretty cool like mountains on it too. Let's see if we can get a good line up. That should be good enough. Let's get right in there. Oh man, that thing is close. Let's see if we can land on one of these mountains. Yeah. We might overshoot the mountains, which is going to be kind of a problem. That's all right. Let's get down into that orbital cruise or uh, glide anyway. Maybe not. We're not going to overshoot the mountain at all. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's going to take a little bit to fly over there. We might just land down on this first mountain here. But look how close that thing is. Man, this is going to be awesome. Might even uh, do a little bit of SRV driving. Find myself some minerals or whatnot. It's been a while since I've done that. I don't really need any at the moment. All right, let's see if we can get down on one of these. Now, this place looks like ridiculous unstable. Like, as in, unsuitable for landing. But I'm sure I'll find something. I just, I don't know, man. It's just really hard for me to pass up stuff like this. When two bodies are really, really close to each other, I want to go check it out because I like... The panorama, like, the the vista views of, like, you know, planetary bodies just hanging out in the sky, you know? It's really hard for me to pass that stuff up. So I'm going to try and land right on top of this hill. 
Or this mountain, I guess. It's, it's probably big enough to be a mountain. And try and get a really cool screenshot of that. I'm going to swing... Uh, when I get over there, though, I'm going to swing this ship around. Because I don't do that enough. Generally, with all of my SRV pictures, my ship is facing away from the camera, you know? I'm going to see what I can do about that. I'll see you guys when I touch down. There we go. It actually took a while to find some suitable terrain. There were a couple times where it said it was okay, but landing didn't actually get me into the landing. If you know what I mean. So let's get out here and see if we've got ourselves a super cool screenshot. First, we're going to need to find that planet. Where'd it go? Where are you, buddy? There you are. All right, cool. So swing out here. Being very careful not to fly off the damn mountain. I think this will do. How about this? Let's see what we can find here. Oh man, that's almost perfect right there. What I don't like is the crazy like lines down the bottom. You know, the where it shows where I can dock again, but I mean this will work, man. This is cool. This is a pretty good shot. I really love when a planet is this close to its moon. What I'd really like is to find an Earth like that is this close. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And we've already found an Earth like that had a moon, and we got a cool screenshot from that. Um, but this is cool. It'd also be really cool if I could find a gas giant that was super close to its moon. But I'm sure they exist out there, and I'm sure I'll find them. But I'm not going to add those to the list, because if I don't find one, it's not that big of a deal. Remember, the last thing that we're looking for on our list is an Earth-like with rings around it. Now, I think that somebody has given me a tip as to where one is. But it's pretty far away from where I am now. So if I find one on my own, that's going to be awesome. If not, hopefully this tip will show me what I'm looking for. In any case, it's all the time I've got, guys. I really do apologize that there wasn't really a whole lot of exciting stuff in this video, and all I really did was talk about Angel's Fall first. But that seems to be the kind of MO for this part of the journey. There, I'm just not running into a whole lot that's interesting. Maybe it's because I'm jaded. Maybe it's because I've seen everything by now. Uh, I really don't think that's the case because I still get a kick out of a lot of things, especially things like this. So... I'm pretty sure that I'm just in a bad patch, like a boring patch right now, and I'm sure I'll get out of it. I have gone on the galaxy map up about a thousand light years and also down a thousand light years to try and look for that neutron star patch I found, but clearly um, it is not in this section. So my plan of jumping back into that patch on the way back is probably not going to happen unless I can find another one. Every time I fire the game up right before I... Uh, you know, before I start recording, I look, no matter where I am. So eventually, I'm sure I'll find one. In any case, again, that's all the time I've got, guys. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of Elite Dangerous or any of the other videos that I've done, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have anything to say, throw it down in the comments. Remember, I'm Commander Restless Corpse. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Eject. 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 Eject.